right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. That is Mr. Josh Garrels farther along. Uh, really, really great artist. Uh, I mean, it's one of the best uh, alive right now, as far as I'm concerned. I love it. I've, I've watched quite a bit of his stuff live as well uh, on YouTube live. Yeah, yeah. Not- yeah, live is great. Yeah, Donnie, I, you were here when we – I mean, I, I I knew of him. I've known of him for, I guess, about a year, maybe less. And he's got tons of stuff. He's been around for a long time. And uh, I, I found his music and just started listening to it all. And then one day I just felt the need. I just wanted to play one of his songs here from the Capitol, honestly, because I was just so depressed. Yeah. And I wanted to hear something that was just uh, uh, focused on uh, God's kingdom and not the kingdoms that everybody else is chasing down here, thinking that they're going to make themselves their lives complete and whole, yeah. you know. And uh, anyway, so then you heard Josh for the first time, yeah, and then you went and listened to him. Yeah, you, you turned me on to him, and I went home and downloaded uh, I think four or five of them. So, yeah, that's so, pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, uh, all right. So, uh, freshman state representative Aaron Pilkington, uh, he ran a bill to end concealed carry permits, uh, uh, f- licensing fees. So the permits would still be available, and the permits are are useful only for reciprocity in other states, as far as I'm concerned, because we can't really control what they're doing. So they are. There is still always going to be a use for permits. That's something to say. Uh, I don't think we should have to have them anywhere, but okay. other states disagree. You, you, do you, would you agree with that, Don? Well, I, I, I kind of have to think this through, but I would, on first glance, say yes. I agree with you. Secondly, though, is uh, I think you're right, and here's why: because most people is going to have the reaction that I just had. Uh, because I hadn't heard this till just now. Well, what about background checks? Well, criminals don't do background checks. So really, background checks, it's kind of like locks on doors. You know, the old saying, locks on doors are just for to keep honest people honest. But I think this actually is the opposite, is, the, is, a, is a permit is really, because the, the criminals are not getting a background check. Yeah. They're not getting a permit. Yeah. And so, really, nothing's changed as far as the illegal activity. What, what, what would you say to that uh, as far as making sure people that – I mean, a criminal's not going to go get or try to get a – Yeah, permit. a criminal's not going to well, decide to kill – yeah, I want to kill that guy. Let me go make sure if, and see if that's legal or not, though. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You, you're, you're already there. So, yeah, I, I agree with you there. You know, there was a movement a while for a while – because Act 746 guarantees you the constitutional right to carry and open carry. And I think, by the way it's read, it gives you a right to conceal carry. And with, that is with, your permit, right? Without, yeah, without a, without a license. Uh, this, uh, the Arkansas State Police, in response to some of those ideas, they were saying that if they found out that you were open carrying, then they would revoke your concealed carry license. Um, you know, because they claim that you, they were subjectively interpreting the rules, trying to twist them because they didn't like open carry. That's one of the ways they fought open carry. The response by some uh, Arkansans who believed Act Seven Four Six gave, gave carry. them the right was to open carry, but it was to revoke, give up their concealed carry Arkansas oh, permit. I didn't realize that. And go to Arizona. And they would go to Arizona, and they would get a concealed carry permit in Arizona that is reciprocal here in Arkansas. Wow. Uh, so Arkansas has to accept it, and they can't revoke it. Um, because it, it, the idea would be you're, you're carrying under Act 746 in Arkansas, and if you wanted to conceal carry, uh, you know, you would still have that to travel for, to other states. You know, it would still, I'm, I'm telling you, there are people that did this. There are people in the movement that did this because they were so fed up with Arkansas State Police. And the Arkansas State Police, they put pressure. I think it's easily uh, understood that they put pressure on Leslie Rutledge to give the opinion that she gave, which left the wiggle room for the Arkansas State Police to say, you still have to have a concealed carry license to conceal carry. When the actual law, if you read it, it's very clear. You know, you can do both. You can open carry, conceal carry, and you don't have to have the permission of the Arkansas government to do it. Well, think about this. While the state police can, can revoke your uh, your uh, conceal and carry license, they can't revoke your Second Amendment right. Yeah. And so that's that's what people look to. Are, do we have states, and I, I'm, I'm ashamed I don't know this answer, do we have states that you can open carry and there is no permit 
uh, required? Uh, there are some uh, where that is the case, I, but I don't know the, that off the top of my head. I, oh, I think it may be Vermont, or uh, I think Connell Fraction had an article the other day about that, where you know uh, Bernie Sanders' state was more pro Second Amendment than Arkansas. Which, with this governor, is not real hard to do. No, no, it's not. Yeah, like you said, the Mitt Romney of the South is what we've got going on down here. Exactly. Uh, now, um, what, what? just kind of give me your opinion about what do you think uh, licensing, because I'm, I'm super pro-Second Amendment. I, you know, I grew up hunting, grew, grew up. I, I've, ne- I've never open carried or anything yeah. like that. But, uh, um, I just don't believe that the government... I believe what the sec- I believe that I believe the way Asa Hutchinson said he believed in his campaign commercial, where it showed him with a shotgun and he was out in the wilderness and he looked all Arkansas-ish or whatever, and he said, you know, I believe in the Second Amendment and uh, you know it, it is what it says it is, or or something something along those lines. Um, I mean, it, it was uh, uh, he, he was just clear, you know, it, it, it is it is as written. I don't believe in regulations for the Second Amendment. It's kind of gone da- downhill from there. Right? Yeah, and, and I know it's uh, uh, I know it's risky. I know there's a risk with people being armed. I think there's a greater risk for when people are not armed, though. Um, you know, there's a there's a greater vulnerability when that happens. And so I don't believe that you should tax the citizens. Um, and, and that's kind of a different argument. If the government was giving away free concealed carry permits for people who took a free class, that would be one thing. I would still have a problem with it because I feel like it would be a barrier. Uh, you have to check in with mother government in order to exercise your right. But at least we could say, hey, this is you know this is not a tax. I think the unfortunate part of that is it's kind of like, uh, and I've been thinking a lot about this here lately, uh, and I'm getting off on another subject, but I would love for us one third one Wednesday to cover, because I know it's less a, a state issue, but this onslaught of information that our kids and our our children are being inundated with with climate change, uh, and so we're going to have a generation or two that's going to just have the foregone conclusion that climate change is real now yeah what i'm what what i'm liking that to is in the second amendment is here i am as conservative as they come you know i'll put my record up against anyone uh yet my first reaction when someone says oh i'm for no permits and i'm a constitutionalist and and yet if i take a deep breath and i look at it the the most constitutional thing you can do is have a state where you can uh, uh, carry without any type of license why should the state yeah. when the constitution has already given you it's just like i don't need a license for free speech i don't yeah. need a, a permit to speak openly um uh, so and, and i understand some of the concerns i understand you know some people but i think guns in general just bring out this visceral reaction to people some people that are well-meaning some people that are even would call themselves conservative in a lot of other areas yeah it's like oh guns they're they're dangerous you know we we need to make sure people know how to handle them and and so i do think a gun is you know people do need to be trained uh you know i'd like for the person sitting me in a restaurant that's open carrying and someone comes in and robs up uh, or starts shooting up the place i'd like to know that person had training but i'm not willing to to i don't really care I mean, at that moment, like if I, if you know, I'm just saying, if I'm in that, if I'm in that moment, like right, I'm just like I'm, I'd be just glad that the guy has a gun. Yeah, that's that's you know, true. Send, that's true. send bullets back in their in their in the other direction. You know, you know what I, th- I think it is. I think it's we want. It's like driving. You know, we want it. We'd like to think that everybody that drives drives responsibly. Right, but they yeah. don't. Yeah, and a license doesn't prove doesn't. We know this that that that's a, a great point, license Donnie. does not guarantee that people are going to drive. Yeah. in a in a reasonable man that's a great point i don't know if this is the ad or not if not i'm going to find it though arkansas's next governor will have to stand up to washington liberals like president obama and nancy pelosi i'm asa hutchinson and i fought for conservative ideals all my life like tax cuts for middle class families i've always defended the sanctity of life never wavered and i believe in the second amendment just what it says 
just what it says. No, you don't. You believe that you could regulate it. That's why you threw a fit when they had an actual campus carry bill that was going to give people their rights back. I can see an ad, that ad running with the song, one out of three ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's finish the ad. Obamacare, I've always opposed it, always will. <laughs> what a joke. I'll be a governor what a with joke. Arkansas values and Arkansas common sense. What a joke that is. You go back and listen to those Asa Hutchinson commercials, and they're just gun rights, Obamacare. I, he said, I believe in the Second Amendment, just what it says. Yeah. Just what it says. You know, Anybody who, anybody in Arkansas, if that's your number one issue, right, if Second Amendment's your number one issue, which that's a lot of people, you, you listen, you, you, you heard that, and you said, all right, it's my guy. Just what it says. You know, it, the right to keep and bear arms should not, should not be infringed unless you are uh, a student on a university campus <laughs> who, hasn't, who hasn't done the extra eight hours of training and gotten an endorsement from a pistol instructor. Just like it says. Just like it did. Second Amendment, just like it says. So on that, this is the audio I really want you to hear this segment. This is the Arkansas State Police uh, spokesperson, Mary Claire McLaurin. She's testifying against Aaron Pilkington's bill, State Representative Pilkington. Did to, Dan Douglas have her? No, come? Dan Douglas did not call her to the table <laughs> uh, for her sake. I mean, gosh. Uh, That's yeah, what Charlotte yeah, her said, digni- gosh. Her, 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 <laughs> her dignity is still intact. Uh, Mary Claire McLaurin testifies against Pilkington's bill. This bill would have done away with the fees. Which, which would be reducing the barrier to carrying a weapon. Now, that's a great bill. It, it is. It's a, it's a small step, you know, and you would hope that eventually we get rid of the licensing process uh, entirely, al- although I just contradicted myself because it is good for the reciprocity aspect. People would still use it People would, because I go to Florida pretty much once a year. All of those states are reciprocal to Arkansas, all, you know, whether you go through Mississippi or Alabama. I like to go through Mississippi. People say it's longer, but they're wrong. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there's, there's that. Listen to this. This is an incredible testimony by the Arkansas State Police. I'm Mary Claire McLaurin with the Arkansas State Police. Thank you, Chairman, members, for allowing me to speak to you today. Um, the problem we have with this bill is essentially that it is very vague. It allows people to carry under the laws of the state of Arkansas and the United States Constitution, but as Representative Pilkington just said, there is a lack of clarification about those laws. Um, there, the uh, ways that That's not what Pilkington said. Pilkington said, with Act 746 right now, we have these rights, but there's been some confusion because you had two attorney generals' opinion. Now, I would, I would caution the Arkansas legislature to don't, not necessarily rush in to clarify. What we have right now is pretty good. We have two attorney generals' opinions that contradict each other, but we have several prosecutors who will not bring the charges and, and actually go and prosecute these people who are accused of a gun crime because they know they can't prove it. And you think That's the attorney good, general's up until this point has been more political maneuvering? She, she did a good job. And I'm thinking of McDaniel and Well, and McDaniel well. was Les, – Leslie Rutledge got closer to the actual – what I believe the real interpretation Just is. Just didn't all, go all – She didn't, said yeah. that open carry is legal under it. But then she said that cops could, you know, uh, if they thought you were looking funny, they could come up and ask you questions about your gun and that sort of thing. You know, it's stuff that is just really strange. And then she bailed the Arkansas State Police out by saying, but you cannot conceal carry uh, under Act 746. And all that was to do was to make sure that the funding source of the Arkansas State Police remains. Now, and that the funding is, that's the key part. That's what this Mary Claire McLaurin is talking about. That it could affect state police are very significant. First of all, if you allow people to carry without, carry concealed without a concealed carry license, what would be the purpose of the concealed handgun carry licensing statutes? Um, I believe many of you have probably been in other committees when you've heard people testify. Um, Those statutes were implemented in 1995. They established the right to carry a concealed weapon in the state of Arkansas with a license. They also implemented a $100 fee for that license. They um, gave state police the sole responsibility for administering that program. 
in a way, the legislature at that time intended the concealed carry licensing fees to fund state police. Over the past 22 years, we have come to rely on those funds. And at this point, if you eliminate or reduce the concealed handgun carry licensing fees or that program, which this bill could do if you allow people to carry without a concealed carry license, that could potentially have an impact to our agency operations of up to $2.9 million a year. That is not what funds the concealed carry licensing section. That funds agency operations. Now, that's a huge problem uh, when the $2.9 million doesn't fund concealed carry operations. It funds something else. It funds something else. That's mismanagement, if I've ever heard about it. But she goes on. That funds agency operations, cars, salaries. People will go home if there is no concealed carry licensing fees paid to state police. Well, there you have it, folks. Our so it's not about the Constitution at all? Uh, absolutely not. It's about money, yeah. Hadn't, it been, hadn't that been the theme of this entire legislative session? Yeah, they got to have money grab in every way. You know. Yeah, they got to have the money or and, and now we've gotten into the policy. I mean, I'm surprised it's taken us this long. Well, police officers are going to lose their jobs. That's what she said. This was going to affect salaries, cars, police officer. People will go home, she says. Now, well, we're here. I mean, this is what they do anytime. In, th- in this case, they're trying to stop you from taking back your rights and the government in this case would lose revenue and they're trying to stop it and they're trying to say now police officers will lose their jobs if we end concealed carry permits it would be interesting and someone maybe in the room might might know this but uh what the total budget of of the state police is and i would i would just taking a wild guess here based on past experiences that 2.9 million is of is microscopic to their entire budget and so that's a uh b i I guarantee you could go in there uh and and cut 2.9 million of fat without ever trying without even trying that that's a b as you said we've got a major problem when we're taking the funds for one reason and and using it for something else uh that, that that's a problem yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you that they became – originally, this money is going to go towards the state police. You'd think it would run the program that we're all talking about here, but it doesn't. That's 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 strange. And I, my next question would be, well, how much does it cost to run the concealed carry licensing program? Because you would think it would be a wash. The service is no longer or, – or the fees are no longer needed. Uh, of course, it would be awesome if if you could get a license that cost five bucks, and we were ran so efficiently that you could get training for free, because we wanted all of our uh, citizens to be able to carry if they chose to. Yeah, it really. I mean that that would be that would be a government service that's actually working. You know, if if you agree with the premise that you, we we want to regulate the the Second Amendment, we want to regulate your gun rights, which you know that's again that's that's a huge problem. I was. Uh, Speaking of Charlie Collins' bill that it passed earlier today out of the House as amended, um, which is a bill that's now going to allow people who have a concealed carry license who, and are 21 or older on a college campus, if you get the enhanced license and the more training and that's everything eight else. eight hours. Eight hours. Uh, if you do all that, then, you know, you'll be able to carry in the capital. You'll be able to carry on college campuses and stuff like that. Well, I saw Trent Gardner. He was posting on facebook about you know some of the publications about how this was a win and there's no question they have now made it easy well they have now made it possible for more people to carry than before that's 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 without question that is what they've done um but somebody was just kind of on facebook was just kind of going back and forth with people there saying how dare the nra even support this how dare the nra supporting more regulations more fees more obstacles to exercising my god-given right to protect myself and that's the way i feel about it right i really do that this was uh there were there was there were better ways there were better solutions better ideas that were out there but asa mr i support it as is written asa didn't like it 
Right. And he caved once again, just like he caved on Rifra, and just like he's caved on a whole bunch of other stuff, just like he caved on school choice. So I, I don't you know? know that cave is the is – the, and I, I'm not correcting you. Go but, for it. But, I don't mind. But, but here's, here's what I think. I think a lot of that is driven from the governor's office. From, from my experiences, you know, tax increases, fee increases, m- most of that is not some legislator that's dreamed up, hey, I think I want to – raise the tax on this or raise the tax on that or give the military a cut but then turn around and raise taxes on everybody else yeah uh, more than it takes to for the for that cut that so it's not him caving that's his agenda his agenda he is looking for hundreds of millions of dollars to pay for this medicaid expansion and that's Donnie, so it's not caving. You, Donnie, you're exactly right. It's I his agenda. You. Yeah, that's a different way to phrase it. Because a, a lot of times I critique him from the idea that he claims, I mean, we know he does claim to be conservative, but a lot of times I critique him based on him having an understanding of what conservatism is that is wrong. Um, but you're coming at it more from an idea of, no, he knows what he's doing is not conservative. You're coming from a typical three branches of government and 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 yeah. the push and pull yeah but that's not what we have here mm-hmm. we have an agenda that's that comes down and uh, democrats at this point are voting almost 100 percent with him uh sometimes waiting until they get what they want and then 25 30 republicans joining with them and they're uh, they're a force to be reckoned with former state representative donnie copeland i appreciate it so we're going to go uh we're going to go to break and uh we're going to listen to this uh asa hutchinson commercial one more time all these promises that uh you know, you can count on because it's Asa Common Sense. Arkansas's next.